Hello, welcome to uh, Books in the World. Um, these are the books, and you are the world. And today's guest is Brendan Galvin, a poet. And I could probably spend the whole show reading just his credits, but I want to give you a little background about Brendan. Brendan Galvin is the author of 16 poetry books, including eight published by LS, LSU Press, of which Habitat was a finalist for the National Book Award. He's received many other honors, including the O.B. Hardison Prize from the Folger Shakespeare Library, and he lives in Truro, Massachusetts. And I've asked Brendan um, to begin by reading us a poem, because I think that will inspire us to have a conversation. This is called Link Lynx. Those zooplankton drifts, bottom stalks in the great soup of being, are aggr aggregating now in places around the, the bay. Undersea clouds are thickening with krill and larval swimmers, sea butterflies, and beings so small they could travel in our blood. Radiolarians, like minute satellites, are attracting the spouts that blow images of trees briefly over water. And even on shore, we catch the sunlit backs of right whales slipping toward sustenance. The right whale, because oil rich and slow going, a floater once the harpoon found its heart. A tenth of maybe 300 survivors are here now, socializing and making their plankton filtering runs between Long Point and the Manomet Hills, on Still Wagon Bank, and all the way from the race to the ocean off the Highland Clay Ponds. They do not recognize shipping lanes or the concept of hull strike. On a tanker's bridge, at the wheel of the little infant, who sees the single stunned water print that's left when a whale dives? How it looks as if the surface were beginning to change to ice. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> I, I always think of this when I ask a poet to read one poem from all your poems. Why would you choose that one? What does that you think tell us about you as a poet? That I'm an environmentalist. Um, that I live by the, by the, by the ocean. And um, is that one of the things that keeps you writing poetry? Because that's what I always wonder, someone who has so many books out, what, what keeps you writing poetry? It feels good. For you personally? Yes. It, it feels good. Um, now, your, your book mostly takes place, uh, your new book, on Cape Cod. And I, and I wondered, uh, is that part of what keeps you writing and what keeps you feeling good is living on Cape Cod? Yeah, I, knew, I, I mean, I knew you know, in 1939 probably that, that, I would, uh, you know, that I would write about this place. Or when I started writing, I knew that I would write about this, this place, that... that uh, most of the things that I cared about were here. Nice. Um, yeah, and it seems like that a lot of, you know, there, are, there are things that take place in town, and, but so much of it takes place actually on the beach. And I was thinking that, you know, that sort of a walk on the beach is sort of like a poem, and I wondered how that inspires your poems. Well, I, I, walk, uh, I, I, I walk with my, my dog, or my do dogs, depending on how many I have at the moment. Uh, on the beach, uh, and uh, and and it's exercise for me too. So so I try to do it as often as I possibly can. Now now, when you're walking, do you uh, do, do poems come to you? Yes, like, sometimes. Do they, do, they, do they come whole or just parts? Parts. Parts, but uh, but uh, you know, I mean, if I see uh, see a bird that I that I haven't seen for, you know six years or something and I recognize it or if, if I uh, or if, if it's a bird that I've never seen before or um, if, the, if the county dredge is working in the harbor and, I, and I'm walking along it and, and so all of a sudden I think I see that county dredge every year at this time I probably ought to do a poem about that nice you know and, and when you when you when you get home and you have this piece of the poem, what, what, how do you transform that? How, do, how does that become the actual poem? I, I start 
you know, I start writing. Usually, I'm usually I'm composing in my head before I put a word on paper, and um, not the whole poem, but uh, I'm, but uh, I want to get enough of it. I want to get, you know, everything of it that I think I can use down, and then, you know, when I when I look at it, I know I'm going to think, okay, uh, I didn't change it from the way it was in my head, so now I have to do that. I mean, I've got I've got to. In other words, if I don't surprise myself after I've written the initial stuff down, it's not going to be a good poem. Right? Yeah. No, I like I like the whole idea that um, yeah, if you don't if what you expected the poem is going to be isn't what you want it to be. You want whatever that was. You want to, to surprise. Yeah. You want to surprise yourself. Yes, absolutely. You want to surprise yourself. Is that there's a uh, a poet uh, whose name I can't think of. Now, <laughs> but at that, but it, but uh, years ago, he published a whole book called "Trying to Surprise God," oh, nice. um, and uh, and it's the same idea. Yeah, sort of no surprise Except in the poet, no surprise. That's in right. The, in it's the Frost. Reader. Yes, that's right. It's <laughs> Robert Frost. That's great. One of the things that, reading your poems, which I, which I love, is that you seem to know the names of everything. How how did you become? I mean. I, I love poems that name things anyway, but you, how do you know the names of every bird and every shell? Well, I'm a birder. Okay. And, uh, and I've been around here on the Cape since 1939, and, uh, and I read a lot of science stuff. And I've got a bachelor's degree in, in, uh, uh, in science. I've got, I mean, my other degrees are in English, but my first one was in science. And I think that uh, that's part of it. Yeah, because I think, yeah, I, I think people think that, yeah, that when you're a poet that you study language, but you have to know other stuff. Yeah. So the poems are full of yeah, stuff. And sure. That, I've, got and a, I've got a lot of dictionaries and a lot, and a lot of uh, information. Like, like a lot of scientific information that I've got, that's a kind of a holdover from uh, when I was an undergrad, I think. Because yeah, as I was reading them, I had my computer up and I was looking up the birds, and it gives me a whole other layer of, of what's what, uh, especially now that uh, you know that I walk the beach most days. Um, so, how do you know? You said it's a surprise, but how do you know when you have the poem that it's done? When do you when do you feel like I now have a poem? What's it's like? a it's a feeling. Oh. If I if I add any more to it, I'll wreck it. Oh, okay. Uh, or it, it, if it's not if it's not done, I can tell that that things are missing, but I but I may not know what they are yet. Now, do you have to do you have to do it out loud for yourself to hear it, or do you just how do you get that feeling? I just kind of mumble it. You know. <laughs> the, and the mumble the, feels wrong? At the kitchen table. Oh, that's great. I, this is good. I, I think, I just, well, you, you can't, you, can, you don't get this right away. Um, it, t it took me about 15 years to figure out, you know, how to read a poem so that it's finished. And, um, I'm pretty good at it now, and if and if it uh, and if I think it's it's not ready yet, it doesn't get out of the house. Right, right. Which is which? If you know, if you're, a poet is listening to this, trying to figure out um, how do you know when you have a poem, and you tell them it's a feel. It pretty much you have to keep doing it to understand yeah, the feel. Yeah, that's right. It's not like you can't really tell anybody that. Well, you have to have this, this, and this. It's just you have to. There's got to be enough. Yeah, you have to have to know. And not too much. <laughs> no, that's wonderful. Um, you do have a, se a great sense of place um, with the Cape Cod poems, but you also have poems that take place in Ireland, in in this book here. Yes. So um, how is how is being Irish American? You were born in here, in in Everett. And being Irish American and, and going to Ireland, how has that affected your poems or changed the way you uh, look at poetry? It, uh, my my daughter and my wife, uh, when my daughter was fourteen, uh, said to me, uh, "Let's go to let's go to Ireland for a few weeks," and I didn't want to go to Ireland because I grew up in Everett and I knew a lot of Irish people, <laughs> uh, and. Uh, 
But they insisted on it, and, and I was delighted that they did. I was in my 50s, and, um, but, yeah, and uh, it gave me a whole new subject. So where in Ireland did you go? I, uh, all of, we went all over the country the first time. The second time, just my wife and I went. And uh, we, did, we did the same thing again. And, uh, and since then, uh, when I found out where my grandfather lived in Donegal, uh, we spent a week there just scouting that area, uh, meeting relatives, and uh, um, we spent some time some time in Dublin, and um, let's see. And so a couple of so I've been I've been about five times, and and, uh, and uh, we just went we went around the country to places and to you know see what we could see. Yeah, that was my question: is did you find your people in Donegal? I found yeah, I, and I didn't know where my father. That, that, those were my mother's people. Oh, okay. I didn't know where my father's people came from then, and then I. I contacted one of my cousins that I hadn't seen for years, and she t she told me, and uh, so now I know where they, where they come from, where they came from too, and uh, it's 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 funny because uh, uh, my, the maternal side comes from the very north, and the paternal side comes from the very south. Oh wow! You know, so it's so you got. Uh, who was it that said an Irishman is like two cats fighting in a bag? <laughs> uh, and then one, that bag one ends the, up Everett. One of the Irish fiction writers. <laughs> said, uh, That's Irish great. American fiction writers. Now you talked about the feel of uh, um, of a poem. Did you did you get uh, some kind of connection when you were in Ireland with with the sound of the language and the landscape? Did that seem like familiar to you? It. I I I already had one complete poem, and I had the start of several others when I got back to the States. So, um, so I, was already, I was already composing. And, but then, I got, but then I, got into, uh, I got into reading a lot of Irish history and a lot, a lot of Irish mythology. I, I had taught Yeats for about 40 years, and um, and then I, and I discovered some other Irish poets that I liked. And, um, you know, it just snowballed. And, and did you feel like you had a, a cultural memory that you just, something about yeah. it was right to you? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, how, and do you think that connects to Cape Cod being another seaside, ocean people? Yeah, well, I mean, my grandfather uh, started coming to Cape Cod from Boston because he thought that the dunes in Truro uh, looked like the dunes in, at Trabriga Bay, or as they say, Trabrigi Bay in uh, Donegal. So that was, so I live like two miles from where he brought, started bringing his family uh, during the summers when they were little kids. Oh, that's great. Yeah, because when the Irish did come to, everywhere they looked they thought was, Nova Scotia, it's kind of like Ireland in Newfoundland, yeah. kind of like Ireland. It is, yeah. yeah. And, and it is, because, yeah, I've been to those places, and it is. Absolutely. Now, you said you that you, you grew up in Everett, which, um, being a Malden guy, I know Everett very well. Um, do, you, do you have poems that come out of that experience, that are more urban? Not lately. Not, but when you were younger, did you? When I was younger, I did, yeah. Um, and when you look back on them, do you, do you recognize that guy? The Everett guy still? Oh yeah, sure, I do, but um, but the poems are quite different. You know? I, would, I mean, like, there's a lot. Um, there was a lot of satiric stuff, you know. I mean, we Everett by the Everett by the sea, Chelsea by the smell. You know that that kind <laughs> of. I'm in trouble now, right? Yeah, that's all right. But I but I think in you know in your poems. Though they're, you know, that you're an environmentalist and you know your birds and, and they're pastoral. And, but there's also, there's an edge to your poems. There's a satirical, yeah. sort of Everett Wise guy to your poems. Yeah, do you people, feel that? People, yeah, I do, and people say that, too. Yeah. yeah um, Readers say that. Because whenever I get in trouble, my wife always says, that's the Malden in you. The, the so you have some Everett in you still. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, so the great thing about... Uh, 
looking at these two books is that you told me there's another one already done and ready to go. Right. So um, can you, it, uh, it seems to be from uh, the years accomplice to Egg Island Almanac, it seems like the world shrunk a little bit more to the beach in the newer one. Yeah. And is there, an, what do you think the next, what happens in the next book? What's well, there, there's some of the same, the same um, venues that are in these two books. But but there are, but there are other things too. There are um, uh, there are a bunch of love poems. Well, there are love poems in some of these too. But there are a bunch of love poems. Uh, there's a, there's a, a lot of a lot of cape stuff. Because uh, I think that's important when you, when you when I think describing the poems. I don't want people to think that they're unpeopled. What happened? It's full oh. of people. Yeah. It's full. It's, yeah, it's, and that is and that is. Yeah, and this and this new one is as well. Uh, there's a there's a uh, a lady friend of mine who 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 uh, passed away in in September, who had been a jazz singer on Rush Street in Chicago, and she had acted off Broadway and 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 done all of these things. And and the book is dedicated to her, and it uh, and I wrote a bunch of poems. Uh, to her in it, and and then th there's a whole bunch of other stuff because uh, what I did was um, I started going through um, my computers and the old computer stuff and finding poems that I had never used in a book before and thinking, well, I, I've got some distance on this now, and why didn't I send this out before? I really, I really like this, or. Or if I move this over here and I and I keep that there, or and make that the first stanza, then that fixes that up. And I could I couldn't see that 15 years ago or whatever. And uh, so that so some there are a bunch that went that went in that way too. Oh, that's great. And uh, you know, so I mean, I just, just I always tell I used to tell students never throw anything away. Right, and you talked about the feel. Is that maybe the, you weren't ready for that yeah, feel yet? Yeah, that's right. That, you know, maybe you didn't. It, it didn't look like enough of a poem. Yeah, no, absolutely. The saving of everything. And, sure. And, is that, and it's you have um, computers full of older things. Is that? I mean, oh yeah, yeah. Discs. <laughs> you know, and the little <laughs> the little three inch square ones. Oh, that's great. And old Macs and, and <laughs> stuff like that. And I just started plugging them in and seeing what I could find, and I found a whole lot of stuff. And uh, who's going to put this one out? Is it? Uh, it's a Louisiana State University Press. They this will be their tenth. That's great. Yeah, they they've been good to me for a long time. That's one. That's wonderful. Um, and if someone's interested in a Brendan Galvin book, because I, I think one of the great things when you see a uh, when you go out to hear a poet read or you hear about a poet is that you is is that you want to bring them home. You want to have the books. So do you do you go right to Louisiana Press or? You could, but it'll be, it'll be uh, that well they have a distributor. You'd be better off uh, going to uh, going online to some of the uh, some of the larger uh, distributors like uh, Amazon and um, let's see what's the other one. It's, like Amazon. I, yeah, I think as yeah. long as people know just, they're out there, I think that, they can find. Yeah, yeah. For some Galvin. reason, a lot, of, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of Cape bookstores don't carry my stuff, <laughs> and uh, and I don't care. Yeah, because there's because there's uh, Amazon and, and the other Barnes and Noble. Now, um, do you have a do you have a like a schedule or a habit for writing, or I mean, do you sit down every day? Um, I try to. But there are days when I, you know, have to do other things. Like yesterday, I took all the potted plants in because it's starting to get cold. Um, but I, 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 I usually work mornings if I can. Or, you know, nowadays if something starts happening in my head, I drop whatever I'm doing and I just start making notes. So I keep notebooks. Uh, I was going to ask yeah. that because oh, yeah. every poet has a different. Yeah, I keep. Is, that, is everything handwritten? I first? Keep, yes. Oh, first, okay. first draft is handwritten, and uh, what I do, what I, what I do is, uh, 
use large sketchbooks okay. so that when you, when I open up the two pa the two pages the, when when I when I open the sketchbook I've got a one that's 22 inches wide and it's 11 inches high so I've got a lot of space to 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 work in Oh that's right. And wild. that's why I've been doing that for years and that's worked. And do you have like them stored everywhere? Do you have them yeah, the Boston College Library, most of them are. Really? Now, yeah. They have you? Oh, that's they have wonderful. A, they, have a, they have a ton of them. And then I gave them something like 29 boxes of oh. manuscripts. Just because I've been doing this for 55 years now. You no know, way. I mean, it, accum <laughs> it accumulates. No, that, well, it's just it's wonderful that somebody wants it. Somebody it is. Wants to have them. That's, that's the greatest thing. Um, so it, it, we, we've talked a lot about the poems. Is there anything about the poems that someone, if someone is thinking, Brendan Galvin, what kind of poet is he? Uh, what haven't we said about the poems that you think um, should be said about them? Well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a naturalist. I'm a sort of naturalist and environmentalist at this point. You know, but I mean, you don't know that when you're starting out. You know, I mean, you 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 write. You know, doing this kind of thing is a way of finding out what you really think, what you really believe. Or, you know, what's what's really important to you, and that's and that's it. Yeah, uh, you absolutely can feel that. Is that yeah? Um, and it kind of it's like a circle that your love for um, this place gives you the poems, and then the poems. Uh, give other people the love of place. And you hope that, that a love of place means preserve this place, preserve yeah, what's really exactly, wonderful about yeah, it. Yeah. Um, and when you're talking about the, the jazz singer, um, one of the things about living on the Cape isn't just especially down all the way where you live, is that it's, uh, it's always attracted artistic and creative people. That, right. I mean, that must have been part of being here, is that your neighbor, the, the person at the post office, is is also an artist of some kind. So yeah, a lot of the time that's true. Yeah. So did you did you feel that kind of energy? Is that one of the reasons? Is that another reason to to be here? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, this is what I wanted it. This is this is what I wanted to do. That's it. And that's I started out doing it. And here you are. And I and did, you did it. it. <laughs> and I did it. Well, let's let's do it again. Let's uh, let's hear another poem because um, I think that's the greatest. Uh, evidence of, of why people should read you. Where'd it go? Pick a good one. <laughs> There's one I already talked about. Okay. <clears throat> An Egg Island Equinox. There is no radical shift of light or red wings calling areas of marsh their territories yet. No plovers probing for copepods. Only a yellow front-end loader laying out a new berm on the beach from tubes too heavy to be called hoses. Its audience, one man and his protesting dog. No frosted wedding cake on tour. No Captain Beauregard hailing us from the Texas deck. No Texas deck, just an unshaven crew launching zodiacs from the county dredge, its twin stacks staining itself in the air with smoke, as battered an emblem of hope as any other. So spring comes to Egg Island, squealing and unwilling. Sulfur and diesel, flywheel, gear and grind, until one morning the equinox dawns and silences the whole shebang. Beautiful. So, what you, what I, I assume, what you saw, the surprise was to see this machine in your beautiful place. What was the surprise when you when you sat to write it? What did you What did you learn about it and you? That's a good question. <laughs> I may I may actually have violated that idea. With you. Well, I've been I've been I've been looking at it, you know. Every every um, February or March, that machine show, shows up, and and they dredge. And the huge, and the, huge. 
Yeah, with the tubes. Whatever they yeah, are. Yeah, the tubes and everything else. So sometimes and, the uh, surprise is just built in. And the dark, well, I mean, I mean the, I suppose the, the Texas, the Captain Beauregard thing, from, which is what, from one of the, um, uh, that's a Mississippi thing, but, but uh, you know, with the smokestacks and everything. And uh, then I had the dog barking at the, at the uh, front end loader and, uh, you know, that, that probably, that wasn't there at first, but, it, but I put that in and, you know, and, but although, although I could, uh, I could probably pick another poem that, that has more stuff that I, uh, that I put in afterwards. I mean, it gets, it gets like, uh, you're walking on water in a way, you know, I mean, you, and, and it feels like it's working. You keep adding things and you keep, oh, wait a minute, look at this. Look at this, and uh, and you get to the other side of the water. And you get to the other side of the poem and to the end of the poem. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Um, I'm thrilled to have read the poems. I'm thrilled to, to know your poems and to know you. Thank you. And uh, I can't wait for the, the new. And I'm going to keep going backwards on you, all the way back to Everett. And... Um, Brendan Galvin's now in my, on my bookshelf and in my list of, of poets I can't wait to read. Thank you very Thank you. much. So, so I'm, I'm honored, really. Oh. Um, so thank you, and, um, and, and for uh, being and on Books in the World. And, and, and I didn't use my right I didn't use my glasses, glasses either. either. So I just squinted. <laughs> this is us saying this is us looking around.